Howdy y'all. Hi guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From Warefoot. Not really, we're not in Warefoot, although I do have a beard. You'd probably fit right in. I probably, I probably would fit right in in Warefoot. <laughs> Maybe they could use three guitars. No, really, we're from Arnie Music, deep in the heart of Texas, that's where we're at. She got an Arnie Music shirt on, I didn't even notice it's it. It's glittery. Sparkly. Sparkles. <laughs> Sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to answer your questions. Welcome to another Ask RNA. Let's get to it. First question from Chris Foster. Being British and moved to Tulsa 20 years ago, oh. we love Tulsa. Yeah, we, we lived, lived in there. Tulsa for like three and a half years. It would be cool if we crossed paths and didn't know it. Yeah. You know, we're actually probably going to visit Tulsa sometime Really soon. soon. Yeah. In 2018. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, sorry. Mm -hmm. Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Living on Tulsa time. I have converted to some Americanisms like iced tea and biscuits and gravy. Yeah, you have. Biscuits. That's like, not cookies, mm -hmm. but biscuits. Yeah. My questions are, if you visited Scotland, would you try haggis? And would Ryan wear a kilt and play the bagpipes as I think he would blend in with the Highlanders? <laughs> I think that you're doing a great job teaching the kids the values of music and no matter where they end up in the world They will be able to make new friends through music Thanks for all your hard work and keep the music alive. No, thank you Chris. Thank you so much um, Would we try haggis? I would not I would not either um, uh, I'm yeah. picky when it comes to American food <laughs> Like I barely eat anything yeah. It's not. It's because it's like a potato. Uh, what is it? Sheep's stomach? Like stomach or? Like, and then it's stuffed with stuff. So. Stuffed with other intestinal you know, things? No, I think it's like with meat and rice and and other, but you know, it's like, like a liver stomach bits, burrito. maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I would not try haggis. I mean, if. If it was something like covered in maybe a good gravy and it had really good spices maybe coming off of it, you didn't tell me what it was and just like, hey, this is what we're having for dinner. And then I, I probably would try it. But if knowing that it is haggis and knowing what it possibly is, it's like menudo. No, no, mm -mm. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, or like chitlins. Most ethnic uh, cuisine. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no thanks. Google that. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, as far as wearing a kilt and playing bagpipes, if I can wear underoos with my kilt, absolutely. Yes. That would be awesome. Uh, anytime I or think like of biker bag, shorts. Anytime I think of bagpipes, I think of Ross from Friends when he's doing <laughs> Celebrate. <laughs> yeah. And then that Phoebe starts great. singing along with him. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of the Mike Myers movie, So I Married an Axe Murderer. Yes, if you want my body and you think I'm sexy. Come on, baby, that's my <laughs> Like at the wedding, they had, it was all kilts and bagpipes. And yeah, that's great stuff. Anyways, yeah, that would be good. That would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think Scotland would be really cool. Mm -hmm. I think I probably would fit in there. And yeah. Uh, I met Our a few families people, from Scotland. Met a few people through from the internet, you know, on various guitar forums from Scotland. And I'm like, yeah, my ancestry goes back to Scotland. Yeah, the Wintons. Black Scottish. Yeah. No. So, yeah. No. The Wintons, sort of. The Wintons, exactly. The Wintons. Yeah. I don't know if mine does. It might. I don't know. I know I have some English roots back there somewhere. Roots. Just not. It's quite as cool as the, being a Viking. Right. But maybe maybe I am from the Vikings who went into England. Or so, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? It's, yeah. But yeah, man. That would be great. I would love to visit. We, uh, actually, yeah. the very first RNA t-shirt I sold, I sold to someone in Scotland. Pretty awesome. It yeah. was really awesome. It was really cool. My first in international sale was mm -hmm. to Scotland. Like seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's super awesome. Yeah. He actually got a hoodie too. So yeah. So actually. That's right. A shirt and a hoodie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. It was Andrew Braidwood. He has a beard <laughs> from Scotland. So I think we had to fit in really well there. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for the question, man. Next question. 
Jason Zimmerman. Hey, Ryan and Angela, love the videos. Hey, man. I'm a bass player. We like bass players. <laughs> Looking to upgrade my rig. I am not sure if I should buy a new bass or a new amp. I currently have a Squire P bass, and I am looking into a Squire Vintage Modified Jaguar bass mm. and an amp. Oh, and for an amp, I have a GK600 head through a Hartkey 210 and Hartkey 1x15. That's a good amp. <laughs> looking to an Ampeg 115 or a Fender Rumble for gigs to just go direct out. Let me know what you think. I know you guys mentioned starting a podcast. I have started one on my channel. Check it out and cool. let me know what you think. Keep the music alive. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'll check it out, Jason, if I get a chance to. We're podcasting is kind of making a resurgence and it's going to be, mm -hmm. according to some people, it's going to be a really big deal in, in the years going forward. So I've been thinking about it. It'd be great to go back and redo all of our ask our nays and upload them as podcasts and mm -hmm. dual, do dual things, but uh, I'll check it out. I would probably go with a new bass because it sounds like your bass rig so far is like pretty sweet. You've got a killer rig that may not be super portable. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if you left the one by 15 and just went with the 210s, the heart key stuff's really great. And the Gannon Kruger, you know, heads are awesome too. So I would probably, um, I would probably upgrade my bass. If I, if it were me, because you've got a killer amp already. Right. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you couldn't go direct to the PA system anyways. Um, or you could get a SANS amp and do something like that. So I think upgrading your bass would be a pretty good choice at this point, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know what the bitter one would say, but, you know, he's not here. So he doesn't get an answer. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Jason. There you go. T-Roy's Music. Hey. Hi, T-Roy. I watched some of your videos. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, hey Ryan and Angela, great video as usual. What do you guys think about the wild audio guitars? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up a t-shirt so I can wear one in some of my videos. Thanks for the great content and God bless. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yay. I think he did get a shirt. We got some orders on our Teespring for our RNA shirts last week. That's awesome. It was great. Um, now we've kind of answered this question semi sort of a few times before about the wild audio guitars. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly enough, um, I, I spoke with Schechter the other day about it because they're they're kind of the facilitator for wild audio stuff being manufactured, and also they're kind of the distribution point for wild mm -hmm. audio. It goes through Schechter Guitars. Mm -hmm. You know, separate companies. Obviously, Zach owns the company, but Schechter right. handles all the logistics and building and shipping and all that stuff. Um, they used to have an exclusive agreement with. Satan, I mean, Guitar Center <laughs> and Musicians I've Friend. I've heard it both ways. I've heard it both ways. Where you could only buy Wild Audio stuff directly from either Wild Audio or Guitar Center Musicians Friend group. Mm -hmm. um, but now they're actually available through smaller retailers. And because um, I've been seeing them pop up at smaller retailers. And, you know, so I gave them a call. Hey, what's up? And so, yeah, I mean, we, we could yeah. become. A dealer, you know, if we wanted to. Yeah, eat the price. If we wanted to invest the money. Um, right. So it's, you know, it's kind of a weird thing, T Roy, because I'm a mega huge Zach Wild fan. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, um, you know, been a big fan for since his time with Ozzy. Mm -hmm. I love the Book of Shadows stuff he did, the acoustic stuff, Pride and Glory. Yes. Absolutely love Pride and Glory stuff. Mm -hmm. um, earlier Black Label. I, yeah. Black Label is not my favorite part of Zach's career. To the point where we named our middle child. I'm not Zach. saying our youngest son's middle name is Zach with two K's <laughs> or anything. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I am a, I'm a big fan of Zach's guitar playing and his work right. and his history and all that. Um, however, the guitars are very, you know, you either love them or you don't. And it's really tough sometimes when you have a guitar or a brand that is so heavily associated <laughs> with such an 
iconic, you know, guitar player, I think it's tricky, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you're not gonna go buy, a, like even when he had his Epiphone uh, and Les Pauls, right. if you're not gonna go buy a Bullseye, you know, Les Paul and play it, and so I was just like, oh, you're a Zach fan. Right. What gave it away, <laughs> you know? So I think it's kind of tricky with someone who's an active musician, mm -hmm. who has a career, who's out touring, who's out making records, not doing all these things. I mean, Zach's a lot more active nowadays than like EVH Van Halen is. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of a tricky thing. You know, is the fan base and the buyers, is it only going to be Zach Wild fans who are buying the guitars? Right. Or are you going to pick up other musicians who are going to play the guitars because they like them? And, you know, with the branding being so close. So it's... It's kind of a tricky thing, you know. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how sales go. Um, I think they were having trouble. Guitar Center was having trouble moving them. You know, I think that's one of the reasons they maybe have opened up a broader base with more dealers. But you know, I don't know. It's tough. Um, if you know, if someone, if I got one at a really, really good price, or you know, they made. It uh, you know lucrative enough for us to do it. I would probably pick them up, mm -hmm. but um, kind of my feeling right now because I've only played on one and I picked one up at a guitar center somewhere just to check it out and play on it because you know I'm a big not? fan, big fan. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I thought they were a little overpriced for for what you got. Yeah, maybe about like 150 to 200 bucks, kind of more expensive than they should be. Mm -hmm. Was my kind of gut reaction. Um, but I think that's probably, that's probably Zach's cut. You know, yeah. he's got to get, he's got to get paid, right? So there's a certain amount of every single Hard guitar out coming out. <laughs> Try to get the money for the rent. Mm -hmm. Zach's got to get paid, you know, so. Pay that get Cadillac gas money. <laughs> there's a certain amount of money in every single one of those guitars that's got to go to Zach mm -hmm. and Barbara Ann. <laughs> She's, he's got a family, he's got kids, you know. So. You know, I don't know. It's it's kind of one of those things. E, I'm a mega fan, but uh, I don't know. There are at first there were some shapes I didn't really dig, but I really do like the new one. I think it's the Blood Eagle or something. It looks like an Explorer. It's their Explorer shape. I thought it was super America, super sweet. America Blood Eagles. Yeah, they're the new Explorer shape. Was it the Raven? I can't remember. That one really piqued my interest probably more than any of the others. So, you know, I don't know. I would love to spend some more time with them. Like if I could play one for like a week or two to really get a feel for it, it would probably be better than just sitting in a guitar center in Laredo <laughs> testing one. But I don't know, man. It's, I would, I'd like to spend some more time with them. But right now I'm kind of, it's a mixed bag for me. So just being honest. Thanks for the question, T. Roy. <laughs> All right, Woody H. Uh, which site do you sell your gear, Reverb or eBay? The reason I ask is because the RNA site is a little sparse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, we do not use eBay. You. eBay's kind of, you know, the glory day of eBay. Um, those days are long gone. I think, with as as far as being a retailer, mm -hmm. um, we do use Reverb. Um, and then we have our own website, which it is kind of sparse. Like we have more guitars here than we have on the website. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to add more to Reverb, but mostly it's Reverb and our website. So yeah. yeah but we much. do a truckload of our business, you know, from walk-ins and then we do a lot from Instagram and Reverb. Mm -hmm. Throw up a picture on Reverb or Facebook. I mean, Instagram or Facebook and people message me, hey, I saw that guitar on your Instagram. Is it available? Yes, it is. I'd yep. like to buy it. I will send you a PayPal invoice and then blah, 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 blah. blah. So we do a lot more, um, a lot of our guitar sales is a lot more organic than just up on a website and click and hit and that's yeah. it. And there's no communication or yeah, whatever. Cause we don't have a giant warehouse and you know, forklifts and going through and picking, you know, we don't have all that. So what you see, you know, yeah. And we don't have a massive inventory. I mean, we only have probably <laughs> 20 guitars at a time sometimes on the mm -hmm. wall. They kind of come and go and come and go. And I mean, we've had more in the past. We've had, we've had a boatload of guitars here in the past. Yeah. And, you know, that was kind of uncomfortable in a way because it's like, there's a lot of our money 
hanging on the wall or in a storage room. Yeah. And, and we got bills to pay. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we kind of keep it at a more manageable level. But uh, yeah. yeah, Reverb and our website. I'm trying to make some changes to our website so we don't use it quite as much. Mm -hmm. And Reverb has changed some things with having, you have to put a UPC label on everything now. So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I don't have a UPC, you know. I have to call each company and go, what's the UPC for this? So I can put it up on Reverb to sell it. So mm -hmm. right when we started re using Reverb, they changed some of their things for listing. New gear, used gear, you can put up whatever you want. But for brand new gear, it was like, ah, oh. <laughs> create or pay for UPCs. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, whatever. So That's just go. how it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks for the question. So check, check our Reverb. Follow, you know, the website, but also follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, of course. You'll see a lot more stuff on Instagram and, and Facebook, for mm -hmm. sure. Thanks for the question, Woody. Next question. Paul Liu. There's a lot of Pauls today. Mm -hmm. Wait, there were a lot of comments that were on here that are from Pauls, but... Yeah, you are. He says, have you tried the D'Addario balance tension strings on any of your personal guitars? Do you think switching to balance tension strings while maintaining the same string gauge would require a truss rod adjustment? Great question, Paul. Um, yes, I have tried the balance tension. And I don't think if you switch, if you have tens and you go to balance tension tens, I don't think you really need, it'd be a really minute adjustment. So I don't think you really need to do that. Um, I didn't care for them at first because they did feel kind of a lot different. I mean, it was a noticeable difference between balance tensions and regular tens. And I was so used to regular tens already. You know, I just went back to regular tens. So I have tried them. I might go back and try them again and give them another shot. We'll see. But yeah, I was not, you know, like, oh man, it's the best thing ever. So I don't know if that really worked out when they when they announced those it was like hey I'll balance tension everybody's like great and you know for me they didn't really they didn't really feel comfortable so there you go try them you know it's they're cheap you know you get a one set of regular balance mm -hmm. tension it's not any more expensive than the regular strings so right. you know five six bucks give them a shot if you don't like them don't worry about it but I wouldn't you don't really need to do any trust rod adjustments for that so there you go thanks Paul yeah. Final question, Hugh Caldwell. Hey Hugh, Ryan, my Strat has low action at the nut and high at the 12th fret. No truss rod or bridge saddle adjustment has made a difference. Do I need to shim the neck? Uh, well, possibly so. If you no know truss rod adjustments have um, worked for you. Um, I'm trying to read the question again. Low action at the nut and high at the 12th. Where do you, I mean, do you want it to be low everywhere or do you want it to be high everywhere? So I think that might make a difference, but you could sometimes strats, you do have to put it in a shim and they're depending on some other factors and that might work for you. So maybe give it a try. If it works, great. If it doesn't, great. <laughs> Not great if it doesn't work, but. So maybe try a shim and see if that helps. And if it doesn't, you know, you can always take it out. But uh, my real suggestion would be take it to a local luthier or tech, like a good one. Not, you know, <laughs> not Guitar Center. Don't go to Guitar Center, but take it to a, you know, a good tech. You might need a new nut, possibly. It's just depending on what direction you want to go. But if anybody else has any suggestions, I'm not a Strat guy. I don't own Strats. I don't play Strats. I don't very often get Strats in to work on. Mm -hmm. So that's not my, uh, I'm not working on them all the time. But if any of you guys are Strat owners, God help you. I mean, God bless you. But, uh, you know, maybe offer your advice to Hugh and we'll see if we can get it taken care of. All right. And that's all the questions for this week. Thank you so much. So there's all, <laughs> had to replace the battery. So there's all the uh, questions for this week. Thank you guys so much. If you have some questions for next week, please type them down below mm -hmm. and we will try to answer them. We did read, I did read all the comments as well. So thank you for all the comments thank you. as well as the questions. And uh, yeah, so ask us your questions. We'll try to answer them. Mm -hmm. and we'll see you guys next week. Keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. And we need the music. And we need the music. 
Oh man, I need a steak right now. That's what I need. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. I need to eat a steak and then go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yes. See you guys next time. Bye.